Hello and welcome to the new video. So today we're gonna do this 22 tiny houses challenge that was made by Ghost Puff in Instagram. I will link them down below in the box so you can go and check it out yourself. The idea is that they're, they have made a list of different type of houses and you are supposed to kind of get an inspiration out of it or just draw basically what it is if you haven't ever drawn them. I kind of did both. I googled a few of these houses and just looked at what they look like and drew that and then there are some that I've kind of used my imagination but yeah some of them are a little bit weird and fantasy like and some of them are just what the name says so yeah I need to color this um, I did the sketching in my live stream and off camera because I needed <laughs> a lot of time to sketch um, proper ideas. I wanted to make these, you know, good quality and cute little houses, so I needed to give some time for that. And I'm not uh, familiar with house designs or drawing houses at all, so that's why it took me a long time as well. The sketchbook I'm using is Strathmore and it's mixed media paper. It's an art journal with 64 pages and it's 100% cotton. The thickness is this, so as you can see, uh, it's not the thickest paper. So when I do use watercolor, it does affect it a little, but it doesn't bleed through. I've used gouache here and you can see it doesn't go through. Copics do, but they you know, bleed in any paper, <laughs> uh, almost. So that's what we're gonna use. We're gonna use co um, watercolor <laughs> and some coloring pens, coloring pencils to be exact. So let's get right to it then. So the first one that is on the list was called floating house and the first thing that kind of came into my mind is some kind of a utopia where houses are floating in the air on top of an island or something like that but i i don't know i've seen those kind of things done so i wanted just to draw a small a small little house that has wings because i thought that that would be fun and it's kind of based on the story of I don't know what country that story is, but it's a house that kind of grows legs and then it can walk. Anyway, kind of inspired by that, I made this house that has wings, an eyeball, and then legs. So that's my floating house. The next one is tree house. <laughs> when I drew this one or sketched this one, I didn't see what it looked like. <laughs> because when I colored it with these colors that I thought in my head, it started to look more and more like a pineapple. <laughs> it looks a little bit funny. Um, but the idea is that it's up high in a tree and then you can climb to it with these stairs on the side and then there's a rope if you need to go down <laughs> or something like that. And then the roof is made out of the trees, leaves. And I really like the coloring of this one, even though it makes it look like a pineapple. But <laughs> I do like how vibrant and green and lush this one is. one is greenhouse. This was the first thing that kind of came into my mind. It's just like a glass greenhouse where there's plants coming out of it. I hope I have one of these someday. So I really do like the color combinations in this one as well.
and the next one is snow globe house i really tried to come up with some kind of original design first i did draw a house uh, like inside of a house to this ball first but then i was thinking that it's not really a house it's just a room so i need to draw a house outside um, perspective of a house so i just went with an igloo i've never drawn an igloo at least not in my adult life so it was fun to try to draw that one i don't know how you would get inside of this or leave or get mail there's a mailbox <laughs> But yeah. Then the next one is a mushroom house. And I literally made the cap of a mushroom as the roof. And then I tried to emulate the stem or whatever it is, the <laughs> bottom half of a <laughs> of a um, mushroom to the walls of this one. I think it's cute. I wish it was a little bit more bright. I do like the design of this one. It looks very squishy. Then one of my absolute favorites is the next one, which is Forest Hut. And <laughs> again, I didn't see when I drew this that what it would look like when I color it. But when I colored it these co with this, <laughs> it looks like um, the pig from Angry Birds. And it wasn't my plan <laughs> at all. I was kind of going for that um, hobbit kind of thing. Because I think those are cute as heck. And... I just wanted to draw some moss over it, but I really do like this kind of, this design. And then um, the A-frame house, and in this one I was kind of reminded of a video, Sara, um, I don't know her last name for, for Forsberg or something like that it's a Finnish uh, girl who makes music nowadays but she started with like many languages um, kind of doing many languages or something like that I think was her first breakthrough video here on YouTube but yeah Sara was in some kind of a challenge where they put her in a this kind of room that was built on a seaside or something like that and she was supposed to spend the night or something in there and the house looked a lot like this one and I really like the setup of this and the big windows big windows are my favorite um, in any building so I like that it has a big window it is a little bit muddy but I do like the kind of realistic colors in this one And to the haunted house. The first thing I thought I would do was like a really creepy house. But I really didn't want to do any like extra creepy things in this. I just wanted cute things. So I kind of went with the in my head classic um, haunted house. Um, and it's very crooked. It's not like realistic at all that a house is this curved or anything but i thought it would be fun to try and make a curved exaggerated house <laughs> and then of course there has to be a bat moon and a ghost the next one is abandoned house and these two kind of i first thought that what's the difference with haunted and abandoned house but then the thought came into my head that it would be a building that was like um, some kind of store or something before and then it kind of transformed into a abandoned house when it was closed so 
yay. <laughs> That's why this weird building. And I also tried to make a different shape because up until this point, my houses has been pretty same shaped. Yeah. So this one is a tent. You can see that it's a tent. It uh, it looks a little bit like a circus tent, but it's supposed to be um, like a normal tent, but it's pretty huge now that I'm looking at it because I drew the trees behind it and they are almost the size of the tent or then the other option is that we're very close to the tent and kind of in a downward angle so that's why it looks as tall as the trees or something like that but I've never drawn like a real tent usually it's like just like a triangle or something like that happy how it turned out but it's pretty simple the next one is a little bit of a um what can i say a catastrophe this is a, a caravan and i tried to uh, copy a picture where there was like a cute pastel caravan on a yard and when i colored it it looks muddy and very sad but i couldn't do anything about it anymore so it's kind of i, I don't like the colors but I couldn't use yellow again because I used so much yellow in this one and I wanted to do some kind of a different drawing. This poor guy just got the <laughs> worst coloring. And the next one is a Rom Romani wagon. I tried to copy a picture I found when I googled Romani wagon and it was this beautiful green wagon with gold and some kind of embroidery everywhere. So I just made a fast <laughs> version of it. I do like the wagon itself, but it's a shame that the background went a little bit grayish. I wish it was a little bit brighter or maybe just like a white background or something. And the next one is one of my favorites as well. It's house on stilts. And that was a thing that I had to Google because I had no idea what stilts, stilts mean. So Apparently it's a house that is very high up, kind of lifted on the legs <laughs> and I don't know when exactly you would do this, not in my scenario. On my picture it's not probably useful because it clearly is near a forest. Usually I think these are used when there's a risk of a flood or something like that. So I don't know, <laughs> this house is really beside a forest or something, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's a little bit weird, but I love how it looks. I love the coloring, I love the lighting, I love the background. Everything went well in this one. <laughs> and the next one is cute. It's the medieval house. I like these kind of designs that you see a lot. I think, I don't know if it's uh, origin for this kind of building, but I love the brown, dark brown color contrasted with white walls. And then they have these kind of cr crisscross patterns. That is just the cutest thing ever. <clears throat> I love those kind of houses. And I do love the colors in this one, although they are, um, a little bit muted muted and muddy but it makes it a little bit more like a medieval feeling so yeah that one i like and then the, <laughs> the next one was very hard to come up with it's the beach house and <laughs> i tried to google a lot of different beach houses I didn't really find anything that I would like and then I kind of came up with this rectangle shaped house that had a hammock in it and 
palm trees so yeah I just drew that and it it really isn't the best from these 22 houses and also when I colored it again the freaking sky went too dark so it looks like there's gonna be like a thunderstorm behind this house so that wasn't planned but that's what it's gonna be <laughs> from now on and at the next point I kind of figured out why they look so messy sometimes my drawings when I colored this in the Victorian house I remembered that I didn't erase all the sketching lines so that's why when you get very detailed and uh, small um, it kind of makes the pictures look more messy and that it's so annoying that I just write in this one remembered that I didn't do the erasing so yeah that's why it looks a little bit too messy like I would want it to be a little bit more cleaner and cuter um, but I I love this kind of house design so I do like this one but it's a little bit messy And the next one is a DIY house and this one was a challenge as well <laughs> for me. I didn't have any idea how to make a DIY house. At first I was thinking about a house that was not ready. But then I thought about the times when me and my brother were playing outside and we kind of made our own little hut somewhere. So I wanted to draw like a DIY house and then I saw this cute picture of the beach kind of thing when I searched for the beach uh, house uh, where they put um, a lot of flowers and lights on top of these kind of things so I added them and I think this one is very cute it's one of my favorites again And then this prompt had a lot of <laughs> water um, based houses and this one I left almost the last because I didn't um, figure out what would be an underwater house but then I just I, I tried many things I was going to do a shell and then make it as a house but it was too cliche and then I don't know if this is not a cliche I think it's very close to a very cliche one but there's a kind of diver's helmet like a very old one <laughs> diver's helmet um, underwater and there's probably someone living inside so that's what I went with when I didn't come up with anything I just thought that maybe in one one simple drawing I can just go with the not so thought about route And the next one I like a lot, which one, um, which is um, Storybook House or yeah, Storybook House. And I literally made it a storybook. And then I also, you can't really understand it in this small picture, but the um, chimney is stacked from books as well. Um, but yeah, I, I like this one. This is very cute. And very fantasy like and then the next one was fisherman's house I think yeah so I kind of painted this um, regular Scandinavian I would think I would think it's Scandinavian because I feel like this is kind of the thought that my brain goes to when we think about like fishing people there are near a uh, lake or sea and then there's a little little house and a bigger house <clears throat> and you store all your fishing stuff in the little house and then there's a boat and yay 
it's a simple house. <laughs> but I do like how cute this whole painting is with the um, background and the small things. So I'm very happy about it, even though it's very simple. Speaking of simple, the next one, oh my god, <laughs> this was a cop out as well. The name of this one should be a boat house. And I, <laughs> I just put a boat and a house, and there it is. <laughs> Maybe it's the fisherman's house on a boat, or, or they have another, this kind of house somewhere stored near on the beach, or is, I don't know. Then I had to take an account for the surrounding pictures and I realized that I've used so much blue in the nearest pictures that I can't use it on this one's background because then it will just not pop out from the you know the grid so it kind of looks like it's uh, not ready but I was kind of getting tired at this point. And then the last one is dream house and I wanted to leave this last. It's not really an accurate um, my dream house and it's funny that I went with dream house as in the house that I want to live someday and not in the way of thinking in a when you're dreaming and that there's a dream house. Um, I just thought when I was coloring this one that god damn why did I go with the dreaming in a dream house but I went with the realistic dream house. I really would like to have a big house someday and I kind of just winged the color. I wanted to make something that wasn't made yet, so that's why it's like a baby blue. Then after the watercolor layers, I let it dry and then I started to add some coloring pencils on top of it and kind of tried to make everything more um, defined, cohesive and prettier because I was a little bit disappointed in my watercolor work at this point. So I'm glad that there is uh, coloring pencils that I can fix it with. Um, I think I would have made everything just a little bit more muddier if I um, continued with my watercolor watercolors. Um, I kind of wish I would have used my squash, squash, mm, gouache <laughs> colors instead of my travel watercolors because they do have a lot more pigment in them. In them. Jesus Christ, I can't talk English. Um, but yeah, otherwise I'm very happy with these 22 little things, but um, of course there's always something I would change. And I didn't uh, think about the color choices a lot before I made them. So things uh, could have been avoided <laughs> if I did that. But this was just to, you know, see what your brain comes up with and train yourself to building drawings and not to be taken so seriously like I like to do a lot. So <laughs> let's go with that. And thank you very much for watching this one. Uh, hope you liked it and see you in my next video. Bye! Have a nice weekend!